Hey, Arik, okay, how you doing? Good evening, sir. Good evening. How was your weekend? Oh, it was fine, bless God, sir. Okay, all right. Well, I, I want to ask, so, where are you based? Um, I'm currently in Kogi State, but I'm actually based in Lagos. Hello, sir. Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay. I'm currently serving in Kogi State, but I'm fully based in Lagos. Oh, okay. So, so you're doing your NYC at the moment? Yes, sir. Okay, that's interesting. How many months in are you? Ten months, sir. Oh, so you're almost done now? Yes, sir. Okay, that's cool. So, so what's the plan after NYC? Um, I've actually, I actually um registered already for a um photography class, like. I want to learn a little bit of photography. Okay. To just to add to my graphic design knowledge and the major reason I'm actually learning photography is to be able to learn how to direct um some shots for probably um, branding purposes or probably product design. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Hmm. So, so how long have you been designing? Um, about two years now. Not like I, I've been designing full, like full, not full time though. I've just been like I used to design for my church. Okay. So I've just been always been designing for church, and I saw it as something that I'm really passionate about. So I ventured into it fully. Hmm. Last year. Last year. Okay. So, so is, is this the first official class you are taking, or how did you learn design in the first place? Um, we have this. Our choir master in church. I is actually a graphic designer, and okay. anytime I do any design, I used to send to him to help me correct or to criticize. So. I'm just like, I didn't learn graphic design from anybody. I just, the system in church, I'm always playing with the system in church and they have correct drawing it. So I'm always trying to design this and that, design this and that. And I guess from there, I, okay, while I was in school, that was last year, before I passed out, I registered for a logo design class online with a kind of a friend. The person is a friend, so I registered for the class and it took course not on how to design but just some ideation and this thing. So it was just a week class and from there I think that's when I started I think I started officially to start designing. And ah. that was how I started. Okay, so, so so you so you pretty much learned on your own. Yes, sir. Ah, that's really cool. That's cool. So so, uh, so this has been two years now that you that you um started design. Yes, sir. Okay, so so w once you are done in Kogi State, now you want to go back to Lagos. Yes, sir. Do do you want to work with someone or you want to start your own thing? Um, I actually wish to work with someone for at least six months or thereabouts to be able to at least be able to gather more knowledge and to be able to improve on my design skill, my client relationship and some other basic things that I need. And I would like to also start my own design, like I would like to work alone freelance okay. and 
if possible, God helping maybe establish a design agency or something. Mm -hmm. so, so, so what part of design appeals to you the most? Branding. 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 Brand identity in general and brand strategy or anything branding. Okay. All right. That's cool. That's cool. But uh, about in, uh, like, what did you study in school? I studied mechanical engineering. Mechanical engineering? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, and why mechanical engineering? Why did you study something design related or stuff like that? Um, I actually love engineering as well, a mechanical engineering to be precise. I love the, just the ability to lay hands on something and either repair or design something and be able to bring it to actualization to actually see it work and actually look, I have passion for engineering but then I think design just came in by the way along the way and I fell in love with design and I just saw it as do okay I have this Fear. That's a fear. It's not really a fear. I just have this um, thing in me that I don't really want to work under someone or to do any labor intensive work. Mm -hmm. And if I won't be doing labor intensive work and I want to practice engineering, I would actually love to practice engineering at least for a while. It means I'll have to do my master's and be a boss or to actually be an engineer, not a technician that would be working, doing the labor work. So I prefer the brain work part of engineering than the labor. And the labor market in Nigeria is not, I don't trust it to give me that. Okay, all right, all right. I think we'll come back to this your story some more, um, if we have the time. Um, Constantino, how are you doing? Fine, sir. I'm fine, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening. It's good to have you join us today. Yes, sir. How, how have things been? So, thank God, sir. Still have been so, so difficult doing what we thank God. <laughs> hmm. oh, 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 why do you say things have been yes, difficult? Sir. What thank do you mean? To God. Um... Regarding what is going on in the in the in the country, yeah, <laughs> things are yeah things are not really moving the way it was. Mm. Yeah, in the aspect of inflation and the rest, and yes, things are not just working. But we thank God. Mm. Yes. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, it's a, it's a difficult time. It's a difficult time in the country right now. Very yes, difficult. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so I understand that. I, I, yes, where are you based? I'm based in Plateau. I'm the same uh, Mark Audu on WhatsApp. I don't know whether you know of Mark Audi. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, Mark, yeah. Yeah, it's Mark, sir. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Uh, how come I know using Mark as your name here? Sir, seriously, I really don't know. Something just happened to my to my telegram, yeah. Uh, I work on it, sir. <laughs> eh, okay, I'm Mark. Now, yes. how are you doing now? Uh, I'm fine, Mark, sir. Well now. <laughs> I'm Mark. Yes. <laughs> yes, my Mark is one that Mark is always listening to my podcast and asking to yes, send sir. a link, a link that you can use that is not um, Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Mark, it's good to it's good to have you. Eh? Yes, good, sir. No, good I can. Hopefully, you're not, uh, uh, hopefully you're not, I'm going to change my device. <laughs> no, no, I, it's, I'll, I'll it's all right. <laughs> yes, no, sir. it's all right. It's all right. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. It's not. It's, yeah. it's not stressful. So don't worry. You can ask for the link. Yeah. Um. Uh, all right. Actually, so Mark, it's good. Yeah? yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I said I have a lot of questions. <laughs> okay, all right. So let's yeah, have so your have... questions, Mark. Let's have your questions. Okay. You have questions. So okay, I have one okay. question, and um, I, I don't know if um, Joseph has a question too, but I would, I will get him. But start with yours. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Um, um, my question goes like this. I listened to one of your broadcasts, broadcasts regarding um, branding itself. Yeah, okay. you talked about branding, you talked about um, business naming, um, talk about visual uh, branding and the rest. 
So I'm um, currently now, aside from graphic design, I'm a student of computer engineer, and also um, I run a shoe business. Yeah, a shoe brand currently now, and actually the sh the, the business has been registered. So regarding what I've I've, I've listened to, um, I, I wanted to share with you on personally on your WhatsApp, but since we are we are here, just let me just share with you. Um, I really don't know if you can actually criticize the the name, though the name has been registered already. Because my intention in the next few months to see how I can actually do the visual branding myself by God's grace. So I really don't know. Um, the name of the 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 the, the business is Mikey Swear. Yeah, Mikey Swear, gotten from my name Mark and Wear itself. And the reason and the the brain behind the name is uh, regarding the vision. I intend to to expand the business. Yeah, not just focus on just shoes, but with time I might bring up things like um. um jewelries and 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 clothing into the the business yeah so that's the, the 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 meaning behind the name so regarding just not just aspect of the name word and word what advice will you um give to someone who is just um coming up yeah regarding this um um business itself and how can i really really build a successful and brand at the end of the day okay that's a good question mark yes sir um, yeah and you know a lot of times um now i said there are two ends to a business or to a company yes, there sir. is the business end and there is the branding end those two things must exist in a business business and branding so when i say business i mean company there's a company that we it is something called an entity called a company that we always call a business but the company is more than a business. A company is a business and a brand at the same time. So we must understand this. So as you take care of your branding, you must take care of your business. So you find a lot of companies that are focused on their business, but they don't do branding at all. So I'll give you an example. A bread seller that hawks bread, eh, what they do is business. What they think is, how much profit do I make? How many people buy bread from me every day? How many bread should I order? How many loaves of bread should I order? They are so business focused that they don't know jack about branding. A, a, normal, a normal bread seller or granite seller, they don't have logo. They don't have brand colors. They don't yeah. have mission yeah. and vision. They don't have target audience. All they have is a product that they need to sell. So what they think about is price, competition, Positioning, that's what they think about. They think about the business end. That's what they think about. Now, a business, a company can work that way because so a Bragano seller is a company. It might not be a registered company, but it's a company all the, all the same because what they are doing is connecting a product to a buyer. That's a company, you understand? Or a service to a buyer. But they don't know anything about branding. The problem with being so business focused is that what will happen is that the clients will not know you or remember you. So you will remember, they say, ah, I bought granite from one girl the other day. I don't know her name. Oh. So you can't remember them to reconnect with them. So they are gone. You understand? So even when you want to de describe somebody, say, one girl by the corner of the road, she sells granite, sells orange. The orange is very good. They don't have any clean branding that you can tell someone, this is the name of the company. This are, is their colors. So it's easy for them to get modeled up with other people that are doing the same service. Now that's business. Now there's the branding end of a company that is all about how do I stand out? I, then that, that will now come to I need a logo. That's the essence of a logo so that people can identify you easily. Then within that logo, and I'm like, okay, this is my logo. What color should it be that will make me even stand out amongst other people that have logos? So you now think, oh, a lot of people that do this, my business, then they are using red. So me, I'll use green. You understand? So I can stand out. So that's the branding end. They now think, what's my slogan? What's this thing that I can put that will attract people? So you now say, our granuts that give you extra strength. You understand? That's just what it is. So just like this one girl, when you go to a shop, her, her branding is green. She has this um, nice logo that has a granite shape on it. And then they are called the granite that gives you strength. You see, her branding makes her stand out. Her business helps her to sell at compete and compete and compete with with people make profits and make loss sometimes now what you've done so far 
is branding, Mark. You have a business, you know what you do, you have a name. You sell shoes, you have a name. You, you are going on to design a logo, you are doing all those branding things. But then, one thing I would advise you to do is, as you are doing the branding, think of the business too. You see, if you have a good logo, good colors, but your price is too expensive for where you are, that means you need to look at where you are and say, how much should I be charging for my shoes? A lot of times, what the business pe mistake people make is that we compare our business to somebody that is not in our business environment. So you say, I want to do a business like, um, let's say, who else does shoes? Nike. Ah, man, I want to sell shoes like Nike. But then you must think, where is Nike? Where did Nike start from? Nike started from the USA. Is the USA the same place as Nigeria? Is their government the same? Are their policies the same? Is their disposable income the same? Do people value shoes the same way in Nigeria as they value in, in where, you, where you are? That's why you, might, you, you cannot do business and compare yourself to somebody else that is not in the same environment. So when you're doing, when you're doing your business and um, research, you must say, these people that are around where I am, let's say you are like um, Joseph now who is in Kogi State. He wants to set up a business in Kogi State. Someone that is setting up a case business in Kogi State cannot be comparing himself to someone in Lagos. Because disposable income in Lagos is higher than that in Kogi State. So you look at Kogi State, how many entrepreneurs are there? How many people are doing their own business, making their own money? Are they, are they government workers? Do they get paid salary easily? Do they get paid salary on time? So that's what you must start, that's what you must start thinking that, okay, I'm working, I'm, I'm in Kogi State. A lot of people are civil servants. They don't have a lot of disposable income. After paying for their rent, they are waiting for the next salary. Do they have enough money to buy shoes? So that means the price of my shoes cannot be the same price of the shoe of somebody in Lagos who is an entrepreneur and can get a good business, a, a good um, um, contract that gets them millions of naira every single month. They can afford to buy ten of your shoes. You understand? So now you now think of the business end. So you, so Mark, you must start thinking of what your pricing is. Is your pricing competitive for where you are? You understand? And where you want to be, because sometimes you are not even selling to the people in your physical dom domain. So you might be in Kogi, but you say Kogi, they're not my audience. So I'm selling online, and I'm selling online to these people. So then you must think: Am I selling online to Nigerians? Am I selling online to Nigerians in diaspora? Am I selling online to non-Nigerians? So you must think of what those people can afford. That's that, that's the research and the work you must do if you are to start a business. You understand the business end the branding end which are already doing you have a business name i like your name it's not bad because it's easy to remember it's personal it seems like a personal name you understand um so that's good now what you now have to think of is the personality this is where people miss it with branding they do logo but they don't think of brand personality and this is where you must think of this your brand personality what is the personality? Is it, I think you call your business Marcus Weyabi. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> so you must think, what is the personality of Marcus Weir? What is the personality? You understand? So you must think, are we a friendly brand? Are we a young and vibrant brand? Do we cater to? Who do we cater to? Are, are, we, are we catering to people within the age bracket of 13 to 18? Or... 19 to 25 or 26 to 35 or 42 you know you must think of who you are catering to and know what their taste is how do we talk to them how you know what the, what's the personality you understand are we approachable or are we premium whereby our our shoes are for people that can afford it and they are premium shoes whereby if you don't have the money don't come near us if you if you have the money, pay us, you get your shoes. And when people see, not everybody wears shoes for Marcus Wear. You understand? But the people that wear it, they are proud to say it's for Marcus Wear because they know not everybody can go there. Or is it a shoe that you believe that everybody should have a piece of Marcus Wear? Everybody should be able to have something from our store. We want to see it on everybody's feet. You understand? So you must think of what the personality is. It's the personality that determines the kind of logo you have. So your logo either looks premium or it looks mass appeal. That's what we design whether you use capital letters for your logo or, low, or, or, or lowercase letters. That will determine the kind of colors you use, whether you use black or use yellow. That, you know, that will determine whether in your logo there will be a shoe there or it will just be words. 
or just be your signature. You understand? All those things give pass a message of a brand personality to your audience. So the work you have to do is know your business. Number one, how much are you going to be selling? You understand? How much profit do you decide to make? So some people, what they want to do is sell a lot of units, but make small, small profit per unit. Some businesses don't think about this. Some people, their, their strategy, their business strategy is sell a lot of units, but make small, small profit. So what they want to do is sell a hundred shoes and make hundred naira per shoe. Some people, what they want to do is sell fewer units or make a lot of profit per unit. You understand? So what they want to do is sell 10 shoes and the profit on each 10 shoes is 15,000 naira. You understand? Both businesses would make profit, but their approach is different. And that's where you know the personality. This is, this is where branding and business work together. If you want to be a mass appeal brand, what mass appeal means you want to appeal to a lot of people. You cannot be, I want to sell few units and make markup profit. Because if you say you're mass appeal, you want to see a lot of people wearing your shoes, then your product price must come down. And then you must think of how you make, your profit is not much, but by the time you accumulate it, it is much. But if you want to be a premium brand, then you don't really care about selling much. You want to sell one to one person that has a lot of money to afford that one. And then that profit can, even if you don't sell another one for the, for the whole month, the profit from that one can keep you going to, for the next month. So you must know all these things. There's the business and there's the branding and of, arm of business. You understand? Um, or of a company. So I don't confuse you by saying business twice. Business arm of a company and a branding arm of a company. So you must do the work to balance out both. And for sometimes, it is not really what you want. It is what you have that determines what your branding and your business would be. And this is what I mean. If you are somebody that doesn't have a lot of capital, eh, one thing I realized is that a lot of people, people that don't have capital, eh, they always try to do selling a, a lot at smaller price. No, that business model is for rich people. Selling a lot at smaller price is a business model for rich people. Selling few at higher price is a business model for people that don't have that much money. So it is the dangotes of this world that can sell salt. And they will sell their salt 100 naira per package. But on that 100 naira, the dangote might be making a profit of 5 naira on each one. But he's going to sell millions of that salt. You cannot compete with him because he has the, the, the money to produce a million of those things a day. He has the factory. Now you, that you have to go and be sieving your salt by the sea and getting the salt out and boiling it and making sure that your, your salt is pure. What you want to do is sell few and make good enough profit on that per unit. But I see a lot of people that don't have dangote type money trying to do brand that has mass appeal. The, you know, what people don't understand is that mass appeal brands, they are for rich people. But I see average, medium um, earning people and low earning people trying to start mass appeal brands. So when you ask them, who is, who is your brand for the sales for everybody? You cannot afford to service everybody. You understand? So. If you want to start a mass appeal brand, you must have money anywhere in the world. Check it. The guy that started Walmart had money. Do you understand? Mass appeal brand. The people that started Primax had money. Mass appeal brand. Dangote has money. Mass appeal brand. But if, if you want to do premium brands, what you need to do, you don't really need that much money to do a premium brand. What you need is incredible skill. Incredible skill. So if you know your brand is going to be premium, and you are a shoemaker, then make sure you know that you know how to do shoes incredibly well. It will take you one week to do one shoe, but that one shoe, when people see it, they will be like, Wow, it's an incredible shoe. Because you can't afford to buy machines and pay a lot of people to make 10 shoes a day. You are your own employee, you are the CEO, you are the employee. You understand? So your skill must be really good. Now, when you go and put that shoe out, people now say, Whoa, this shoe is very nice. So then they come and meet you, then you tell them, mm -mm. You have to book our shoes two months ahead. They think it's because you want to pose. But the truth is that you do not have the financial resources 
to hire stuff from a factory that they get their shoe tomorrow. Do you understand? So that's what you need to think about all these things for your business. And those are the things that make a business successful. So you must think of the branding and you must think of the business at the end of the day. That's what will make your, your company successful. Does any of that help you? Um, Mark? Seriously, thank you so, so, so much, sir. I'm really, really blessed. Seriously, I, 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 I never thought in that way regarding the, the mass appeal and the premium. Um, and personally, like you said, I was thinking of the, the mass. I was thinking of you talk about, okay, this is where I should be um, heading to. But based on your um, answers, I guess you have given me direction already on what next to do, actually. You have really, really given me directions, sir, and I really, really deeply appreciate um, your answer. All right. Thank you very much, man. So, yes, if you have another question, let me ask um, Joseph. Do you have a question you want to ask? Yes, sir. I have some questions, yes, sir. About four, four of them. I don't know if we have time to cover all four. Can I ask now, sir? Hello, can you hear me, sir? Hey, Joseph, are you there? Okay, if Joseph is not here, then um, I think uh, Mark, if you have any other question, ask me. Okay, actually, I think it's, it's network issue. He was actually calling your name. I think maybe it's network issue. Yeah, from from Joseph. Joseph. All right. Um, since um Joseph um network is having an issue. Um, let me go to my next question, sir. Yeah, my second question. All right, go ahead. Is, yeah um regarding um branding regarding um logo design uh, um you really talked a lot that's the entire um and cause actually so i just want to i don't know if you can just um share with us based on your experience and everything um how do you normally um approach um a work or a logo like let's say a a, a brand and um, meets you that you should design a logo for them or do some branding for them. After getting the brief and everything, <clears throat> I don't know if can you share your your possibly your your steps on how you you go about this designing. Yeah, what is that um step personally you do normally um, um follow to in order to get um this thing very very right and and correct. All right, that's a good question. Um, so. I, I'll tell you the steps. And you know, I've told you for everything, there's the business end and there's the branding end. Um, so I will, I, as I'm telling the steps, I'll be telling you the business end and the branding end. Um, all right, so when someone contacts me to do a logo, now I run a small company. Um, I work from home. I work a lot on my own. On I used to work a lot on the projects on my own, but now since I do mentoring, <clears throat> I have um, some people in my mentoring club that are incredibly good. So I normally contact them for the job since I don't want to be doing as much design as, as many designers as I used to do many years ago. So first thing first, I have a rate. I have a rate card. So when someone contacts me and says, oh, I saw your work on this. This person recommended you to me. I have this referral. Um, the first thing I always ask them is, what do they want to do? A lot of them say, okay, I have this company. I want to brand. I want to change our logo. I want to create a whole new logo. I want to create some brand collateral. You no. Know? Um, so first thing, we just have a short discussion. Not not very not very long. Something for about a few minutes. Sometimes even a WhatsApp chat. And um, I now tell them I will send them my rate card. So I don't try to commit too much upfront in terms of conversation. Just have a rough idea of where they are going. Do they want a logo alone? Or do they, just, do they want to do like a full rebranding or a full branding? Do they want to do 
um, brand strategy. Um, you know, I, I, I try to know whether what they want to do is within my service, the service I'm offering. And um, once I find that out, I send them my rates. I have a rate card, very important that everybody has a rate card that shows how much it is you charge for your service, your packages, your delivery timeline, and also ways in which they can pay to you. Those things are very important. How much you charge, your packages, delivery timeline, and means of payment. You understand? So I send that to them. It's a one-page document I have. So I send it to them, and they now get back to me. Those Now, this is where designers have to be careful. A lot of designers send this out, and they begin to get excited at this page that they have a client. You don't have a client yet. You have somebody that is making inquiries about what you offer. Never get excited. So I send out to them a lot of times so people don't ever get back after seeing my rate card. It's either I'm too expensive or so people feel like if that job just didn't pan out for them anymore. So I never get excited. I never, so I never get disappointed when people don't get back. But when they get back, I um, they, they either call, get back to me and tell me, okay, um, this is how much we have. It is way out of our budget. Then I now talk with them and now see what their budget is and see what I can accommodate. So some people, way out of their budget means that we can't work together. So if I'm charging a 100K and they say their budget is 10K, all I just do is just tell them, oh, I don't have anything I can accommodate 10K and I can't force them to rise up. It's too much of a rise for them. So a lot of times I tell them, I don't have that kind of thing, right? I don't have that kind of pack package to accommodate them. I don't know any designers that can accommodate them that I can vouch for. Now, that means that I have a lot of designers that charge 10 key. I know a lot of designers that charge 10 key, but I can't vouch for them. You understand? So I tell them, I'm sorry, we can't work together on this, so and so. So, but if they, if they tell me, well, our budget is like 80K and we have um, 100K, now it now depends on how free I am to work. So if I'm free, I believe I don't have too many projects on ground, I really need to work with them, then it's, it's not bad. I can try to talk with them to move it up to 90. Um, but then 80k is not bad, you understand? So I'm not too rigid with my rate card as long as within the limit. So um, if we agree on a price, on my rate card, there's already payment terms. So there's an upfront price um, 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 fee they must pay, which for me is normally 70%. And they pay that upfront. And once they pay the upfront, I start to work. I never start work before they pay the upfront. I don't even start thinking about the work self till I get the upfront. When you get the upfront, you can start getting excited, but not too excited, you understand? So we start the work, and um, first of all, I start with a discovery call. And this is a call where we now spend a lot of time talking, you understand? So I talk with them, and I tell them, um, I ask about their, their, their business, I ask about their, um, their audience, about their why, about their who, where they are going with their business. The things that just help me get a background about them and what they see in their mind's eye. And after which I go away, if I have more questions, I'll call. But that discovery call normally takes a long time. It takes an hour to two hours sometimes. Um, so it might be a discovery call or a discovery session where I meet with them. I don't go, I don't meet with as many people as I used to before, but now I, um, I have like WhatsApp calls, Google calls, um, Zoom calls, and we can talk. But a lot of times I prefer doing a recorded Zoom call. So it's recorded so I can go back and listen. Very important. And even when I have live meetings, I like to record. I just put my voice record. I tell them I'm recording this thing so that they know. You almost always tell people that I'm recording them. So I tell them I'm recording them and, and they start expressing themselves. So I go back home because sometimes when you're in the meeting, sometimes there are nerves. You'll be nervous. That It happens to me. I've been designing for almost 20 years now, and I still get nervous when I meet with people. So sometimes, because you're nervous, the first few minutes, you're not hearing anything, you're trying to settle down. So when I go back and listen to the recording, you now start hearing things that people are saying. Um, so after listening to their, to their call, I do something called a mood board, whereby I, 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 I tell them everything I got from the meeting, their brand, their audience, um, then I, I, t I, I now tell them what I envision the end product will look like. So I gather some logos that I feel like, mm, this is the style that your logo might end up based on what you're telling me, all the information you're giving me, your, your um, inspiration, your why, your, you know, people that kind of fall within 
where I think we will end up. And I just I show that to them. And then I get I, I wait to get the approval. Now they look at it and say, yes, everything you've written here is accurate. And everything you've shown us seems like somewhere we want to end up. Um, and I'll start working with my designer or by myself. And um, when we start working, you know, the way I work, um, I don't really show sketches to clients. Because, and that's the personal thing, and I'm not saying everybody should work like that. Because I, I, I have the mentality that people can make wrong assumptions on work in progress. So when they see something in progress, it doesn't look so nice. So they can just say, I don't like it. But, it, but, you, but you as a designer, they're already seeing the flesh, but all they're seeing is the bones. And they're like, no, I don't like these bones. So, so I, I don't really show people work in progress so much. As long as they've told me they like what they see on their mood board, on their mood board, no problem. So I work um, for, for a couple of days or weeks and stuff like that. Um, uh, so I work with a designer. I always ask the designers I'm working with to keep me in the loop. They show me their sketches. I look at it. Is it... If they, are, if they are going the right way, I give them some room, go and develop it and stuff like that. And when we come up with something that I think suits the the client's needs, then I ask for a meeting and I reveal the logo. The logo. No, I have nothing so developed to the client. And then they look at it and say, oh, we like it. Can we change this? So I don't commit too much first in terms of design presentable. Just one, one slightly finished up logo. And then they look at it and say, oh, we like this and stuff like that. Then after which we now go and develop a more extensive presentation, brand guide and stuff like that. And then we present it to the client. By this point, you already have the approval. You know, all this is just blowing their minds, basically. But you already have the approval. And at this point, so when, when, you, are, when you are coming back with your mock-ups and stuff, which you guys were meant to work on, your presentation, just like how we did here, show sketch from sketch, digitization after digitization come to client again client likes your digitization you now go and mock it up so if you listen to the class we had the recording of last week's class you realize i talked about presentation i think but only joseph was around for that class um, but i talk about presentation and then when you show your clients your presentation they are able to um see their work in real life after you show the presentation then you can now invoice them for your payment your balance payment and they, and they pay your payment, you understand? Now, this is where some people feel, what if they don't pay? Well, that's the risk. That's the risk. And I tell people, when they paid 70% upfront, they were taking a risk. Because what if you didn't design? You just ran away and you and you threw away your phone line and they didn't get you again. Now, at this point, some people, some designers say, ah, I won't give them the work till they pay my balance. I think that is you not choosing to take any risk when they took a risk on you. So now it's my own turn to take a risk and give them their work and invoice them and come and say and 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 trust them to pay. Now, are people are people made it difficult for me to collect my balance? Yes. But are they many? No. You understand? That's the truth. There are some people that just couldn't, that just for some reason held back on balance for a while. And you know, this way you have to be human in working as a business or as a company. You just have to leave human frailty. That's why it's important to love what you do. I love what I do so much that sometimes some people want me balanced, but I'm not too, as long as when they like it, eh, it's something that I'm, I'm so appreciative of people liking my work that when they don't, when I, and they tell me, oh, Mr. Tony, we can't pay our balance, we have, we have a little bit of problem paying. I'm not too much on their neck because number one, I've already won. I won by getting them to pay me 70%. I've won by the fact that they, I did work and they actually liked it and they want to use That's a blessing. It's more of a blessing than paying me my 30% balance. Then I'm willing to wait. I say if you are willing to wait, they are, they, they are willing to return that favor back. And sometimes, most times, that is the exception when I wait. Most times I don't wait. You understand? Know, because they, they pay up on time. So, but I believe it's it's a good nature for you to be able to give the client their work and just invoice them and tell them their, um, about the um, their balance payment. Now, when you invoice them, there's also a possibility that they might forget to pay your balance because they've gotten so excited and they've gone. So invoice them your, um, immediately as they're giving them their finished files. Let your invoice go with them. Give them a day, two days, remind them. You understand? So just go that two days thing. Two days, remind them. You understand? That, and that's it. They're not getting back to you. Maybe they're getting back and say, oh, um, we'll get back to you next week with our payment. 
Um, this day is not the time for you to say, ah, no, 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 I can't wait next week. Oh, next week is next week. They tell you, we'll get back to you with our payments end of the month. Just relax. You understand? Just allow them. You understand? Then when it gets to the end of the month, invoice them again. If they give the wrong go, tell them, no, tell them, oh, we're still expecting uh, this. And you see that the exception will be that people will default. But a lot of times people don't default if the process is good. Because the truth is that they like the process themselves. They like the process. They don't want to do anything to ruin it because they never know when they will need the logo again. So it's only if they don't like the process that they will wait for you at the end of the day and say, I will show. Shabi, he didn't show me. He told me we're going to do my, my work in two weeks. I have to wait one, one month. No problem. When it's time to get his own, one, his own um, balance, I'll make him wait two months. It's when the process is bad that payment becomes a problem. When the process is good, payment becomes a delight for the client. You understand? So when they like the, pr the process, they will not do anything to ruin that future working with you again by not paying up because they want to keep that relationship going just in case they have something else to do in the future. So, so, so that, 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 that's my process and um, that, that's the process I, I use. So I hope it's something you can get something out of too. But your process doesn't have to be my process. It doesn't have to be as rigid. Just take what it is that you feel is good about the process and come up with your own process too. But at the end of the day, your process should delight your client. Do you understand? At the end of make your clients happy. All right. Thank you so, so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. So, Joseph, are you back? I'm back, sir. All right. So, ask your question, Joseph. Okay, sir. Um, the first question I have here is actually kind of a personal question. Because, right, okay, for since I go to this, um, where I'm serving, I'm actually serving in a village, a village kind of setting in Kogi State. And my plans for this year, personal goals and all that have been like sabotage like several times. And it made me lose kind of, I'm kind of losing interest in working and learning, learning to be more particular learning till probably when I get back to Lagos. But I feel like time is going and because there was it for about two months when I got after I got here around March, April, then May, there were we had network issues that there was no network at all in the whole village. Even to make call, we have to climb mountains and do all sort of things. So, um, but the network is kind of back now. It only goes once in a while. And even we had, we have light issues, but I was able to get a generator, a small generator to keep up with things and be on the go, just so that I can at least keep up with things. But I kind of, during that network period, after the network um, issues, I kind of lost interest in so many things that I had planned out for the year. And like this year, I actually wanted to improve my design skill a lot. I had plenty plans, plenty on improving my skills, but it just feels like every time I want to start something, the like life just happens. And if it's not network, it's light. If it's not light, it's something else. And it just kind of always coming the way of my plans and everything. So I don't know. I kind of lost interest to be sincere. I lost interest in I actually like paint some so many things and I'm like maybe when I get back to Lagos I will um start them again. But I think I feel like I can cope now a little at least I've learned I've been here for a while and like but for me to now kick start the things that I've that I stopped is kind of difficult. Even for there was a time that I designed even to carry my system and learn new thing is kind of difficult for me. I just feel like I'm not interested for now. Maybe when I get back to the goals or something, I just lost interest. And I don't know is there anything I can do to like to revive my interest and get back to that me that was very passionate about learning and improving my skill. All right, that's a good question. Um... Joseph. All right. So this way I'm going to talk about NYC. NYC. Now, before I went for my NYC, while I was in school, 
I used to pray that by the time I finish school, they scrap that rubbish called NYSE. I used to pray that by the time I have finished, they should have scrapped it, but they didn't scrap it. So I went in. By the time my wife was doing that, I was praying that let, let them scrap it for my wife's sake. They didn't scrap it. And it's almost like they would do scrap that thing. Even my, my, my daughter is 11 years old now. I, I, I kind of feel like if by the time she goes out of university, that thing will still exist. Because that thing benefits too many people for them to scrap it. Now, what do we now do with this thing that seems to be a hindrance in a lot of people's plans for their life? It seems to be a one-year hindrance. Now, we cannot continue complaining that NYC, eh, they posted me to a village, they posted me to a rural area, it's like a break in my life. It's like a break, a setback, a one-year setback. We, this one-year setback is not going to go anywhere. It's going to be there. So what we need to do is stop looking at it as a setback and start looking at it as a reality. One thing I realized about NYC, the mistake we make I made that mistake, a lot of people make that mistake, is that they always look for career advancement within the NYSC one year, which is very hard to get if they are posting you to a rural area, a village. What kind of career are you going to advance there? Career advancement won't happen. Very few people have career advancement doing NYSC. A lot of people experience a career halt. A career halt or a stagnation. You understand? That's what happens during NYC. For most people, 80% of people, 20% of people posted to town, posted to places where they've influenced, posted to good organization, get career advancement. The place they served is the place they are, they are working. And they, are, and they work there for, the, for like a good amount of years in their life going forward. But very few people have that story. Most people have the story that you have. I am in a village, a remote place no network, no light. So what you need to do when you realize you're opposed to a village is to take that your career advancement, fold it in a box and put it away. What you bring out of your pocket now becomes what you call personal advancement. What you are now going to try to learn in that one year is to grow as a person. Not grow as a professional, but to grow as a person. That is the advantage you have on being for, um, for being sent to a village. You were living in a city. Now they're sending you to a village. It is not all a disadvantage. It might be a stagnation for you as a professional, but I can guarantee you it's a massive advantage for you to grow and a massive opportunity for you to grow as a person. Because you know what? In a village, there are less distractions than there are in a city. So you must see it as a retreat, a one-year retreat. See it as a gift. Don't see it as, as a place where, where you want to um, start your career. No, just see it as a place where you won't design for one year. One year you won't design. What you need to do is go around observing, interact with people, learn. Learn, learn from village life, how to slow down, how to appreciate life. How to appreciate the small things of having light once a month. How to deal with boredom. That's what the city doesn't teach us. And that's why there are a lot of city people that have not grown as people. Their souls have not grown. Their bank account has grown, but their soul hasn't grown. Look, that is what a lot of people, eh, white people abroad, that's what they understand. That's why when somebody abroad they has made a lot of money, he then realizes that he's dealing with a lot of fatigue from being so wanted and in demand. We just leave and come to Africa and spend three months here. And they will go back and just come back and say that, that my African experience was just incredible. I met people and they were so happy and I learned about happiness. Some of them don't go to Africa. Some of them go to some Asian place. Go to Tibet. Go to Mongolia. One mountain where there's no light, no electricity. And they, really, they begin to be in tune with God and nature. The problem is our expectation. Our expectation does not align with the reality. We always expect that NYSC should propel us career-wise, but it won't do that if they are posting you to a remote area. There is no career advancement there. I must learn to live with that. But what we can get, the gift in that, 
is that you get to see a part of life that a lot of us will never ever get to see again after NYSC. That part of life, that rural part of life, that waking up in the morning and not hearing traffic, but just listening to, as a designer, as a creative, is an opportunity, just listening to the birds, listening to nature, seeing what, tasting what real good food from the farm tastes like, not supermarket stuff. Do you understand? That's what, that's what, that's what it's about. And so if, if you are able to grow as a human being, eh, by the time you go back to Lagos to work, you see how ideas will start flowing through your mind. That the guy that did NYS in Lagos, because he has, inhaled, he has inhaled so many fumes, he has run about on so many buses, he has been sick, he has gotten well, he has, you know, he has lost weight, he has gained weight, he has done this, arm robbers have attacked him. He's, he says he's drained mentally. But you, that you open yourself to that simple village life, you come back and you are re-energized. You are re-energized. You see life differently. You see that the way you would approach your work is different from the way other people approach their work. There's a guy called Stefan Sagmeister. He runs a studio in the US. Every seven years, they close that studio down. For one whole year, everybody, you will still be paying their salary, but that studio doesn't open for, open for one whole year. One whole year, travel. He encourages his staff, travel the world. Go around the world, travel. Go to rural areas, places you've never been before. Go, go there, just go. Go somewhere you've never been. I say by the time they all come back in the ninth year, because the eighth year is always, the ninth year they come back, say that the work they start doing, eh, him God just realize that the, everybody has had a spiritual experience. That's why that studio stands out so much. You see, sometimes they'll do something, you say, what was going through these people's minds? It is because their mind has gone far and wide. The same thing with um, Nike now. If you read the book by Philip Knight, before he started Nike, he went out. He traveled, traveled the world, went different places. At a point, he traveled, all his money finished. Then now started traveling as someone that needed money. They now began to realize he went to Vietnam, went to different places, met different people. It's all those things that he now took in his brain and now went back to, was it Oregon or I don't know where they even, Oregon or so, where he now began to talk to people about this idea of Nike and all the experiences he had. That's why Nike is such a superpower because it, is, it was a spiritual experience that led to that physical product or that physical thing that we see as Nike, the organization. So NYC is a blessing when we look at it. When you get posted to a village, it's a blessing. I'm telling you, it is. It is. You might not know it now, but if you, the problem is that we go there with our minds closed and not with our hands open. We have to have our minds open, our hands open, and be ready to experience. And then you realize that the person that sent you to that state, they were not trying to kill you. They were just trying to liberate you. Do you understand? That's where you really get to learn. So don't, don't, you've done 10 months, you should have two months more. Look at that two, let your approach be different in that. Don't see that, oh, my life has stagnated. I'm, I've, I've given up. You have given up because your expectation is career-wise. It's not personal. What you need to do is, Joseph, just know that, okay, I can't design here. Network is even bad. I can't be going online. So pack all the walls to the side. I will start going online in three months time when I get back to Lagos. But for now, I am on holiday. I am on holiday. I am here to meet. I'm here to influence. I'm here to have experiences. I'm here to take photos. Look, your life will change. Look, when I, when I went to school in Canada, I came back from Canada. And my, ex, my mind was like, Tola, it's time to start this design business and just start to get clients. So I came back to Nigeria, very hopeful that, man, I'm going to build the next big design business in Nigeria. And I did one month, two months, no clients, nobody. Ah, I'm like, this is not what I went to school for. Now, nobody. I will pitch, 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 this flyer, flyer. Nobody came calling. Ah, ah. I said, what's going on here? It's not how I planned it to be. So I was beginning to get sad. I began to get sad because it was like, if there was nothing for me, I would meet with people. They would say, your work is good. Mm, not, not really what we are looking for. I said, it's bad. Though. So one day, 
my dad said he was traveling to the village and asked me if I was interested in coming with him. I said, what am I doing? No, 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 there's no client here. Let me just go to the village. So as I was about to go to the village, and once something happened, my, me and my wife now, now my, my, she's my wife now, but she was my girlfriend then, we had this misunderstanding. So I was like, mm, I'm, I'm not going to take this misunderstanding with me to the village. Do you understand? So I left my phone in Abuja so that we won't get to talk till I get back. I wanted, I wanted to take a break. Do you understand? Because I didn't want us to. It was, it was a huge fallout we had. So I left my phone. I traveled then. No phone. I, I, I don't know if I can do it now anymore. But I traveled no phone. I went to the village. And we went there for about four days. I think so. About four days was the most incredible four days of my life. At least till, till now, though, I've had other incredible days. But as I came back from Canada, it was incredible. As we were traveling, no distractions. I was seeing hot. I was seeing pe people's culture. When I got home, it was so different. I took photos, pa, 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 different things, nature, all those things. We had some tortoises at home. I took their photos. I took photos of things I was seeing. You know, I was just taking in everything. But after that four days, we went back to Abuja. I now connected my camera to my laptop and to check out my photos. And I was seeing different things. And in one day, I just sat down and designed a new website for myself with the photos I had. In one day, I designed a full, they were still using Micromedia Flash, a Flash website, designed it. And the site was so incredible, but it was like a spirit in me. I just kept on designing. The design was so good. All the photos put together it was so colorful. And I launched the site. And immediately, when I went and I started, the first person I showed that site to, Person was like, ah, man, we need a website designer. Do you want to work with us? That's the first person that saw that site. But that site was too incredible. I've taken the site because it has been many years. But ah, my that site was incredible. The animation was good. But it didn't come from inspiration from a city. It was that inspiration from that village life. Just opened my eyes. Just made me feel free. Do you understand? So now I understood that ah, everybody within the retreat, oh, that's what NYC gives us, oh, that opportunity to retreat into country life, into a simple life, and to be more in connection with God than in connection with our careers. We should be more in connection, that, what you're doing right now should put you more in connection with your creator than with your career. But a lot of people see NYC as an opportunity to be in connection with their career, when it's actually an opportunity to be in connection with your creator. To be thankful to your creator that, ah, look at this, you see the water they are drinking. God, thank you. You have really blessed me. See the school they are going through. Look at me. I have a good education. When you come out of NYSC, you should come with a mentality of thank you, God. And then you don't go into your career wasting anything again. You go into it saying, I will not be wasteful because I know that there are people that have less. You understand? That's what is life. So that's what NYSC should be for you, Joseph. These two months, take it as that. Don't take it as anything for to be build a graphic design career. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Forget all those things. Build yourself. Build your relationship with God and be thankful. There are a lot of things you'll see that will make you thankful. So that, that would be my advice to you, Joseph. Oh. This is actually, I'm, I'm grateful to God that I'm able, I'm, I'm able to make this call and you're able to, I'm able to learn all these things. When I still have two months to go, wow! Lovely. Thank you very much, sir. God bless you, sir. Um, oh, you have spoken you. the absolute truth because sometimes too I see it as a blessing to be able to learn new things. Just like it seems, I let the disappointing parts to overwhelm my um, gratefulness. Thank you for opening my eyes to that, sir. I really appreciate, sir. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right, so we'll go back to Mark now. Mark, do you have any other question? Yeah, yeah. Let me ask the second question before I ask mine. Okay. Um, yeah. All right, so Joseph, go ahead and ask your second question. Okay. Um, this is a kind of though the other question I wanted to ask. Mark, I've asked it. That that was about um, branding and your process. Yeah, okay. I've asked that. Let me just okay. This other question. Um, okay, sometimes when I 
have um, a job, most of the time, usually for close relatives and family and friends, I used to like go out of my way to, I always wanted to be perfect. That's the word. I don't know. And personally, I am not usually satisfied with my own, the outcome myself. But when I show people, people are always like, oh, wow, this is nice. This is this, this is that. And but still, personally, within me, I still feel like it's not good enough. I don't know. I have that. How can I overcome that kind of feeling and be able to do a work that is that me myself will be able to appreciate? I think that is the question. All right, Joseph. All right, that's a that's a good question. Um, you do your work, you feel it's not good enough. Other people see it and say, "Wow, this is so good." Now you are a creative. That comes with the territory. It happens to everybody. I don't know a creative that feels 100% satisfied with his work. I hardly know a creative that feels 90%. Very few that feel 80%. A lot of creatives, 70% satisfied, 60% satisfied, 50% satisfied. I'm telling you, a lot of them doing great work. Some of them, you see their work incredible, but they, them, they are, they are like 40 40% satisfied. They're not satisfied. It comes. It happens to me too. I'm hardly satisfied with things I do. Immediately I do it, I'm insecure about it. I'm like, mm, this is not good enough. For... Then if somebody will now come and I say, wow, this is nice. Though. This is really good. Then I start to feel a little bit comfortable. It happens. It comes with being a creative. It's one of the identifiers of a creative. A non-creative is always satisfied with what they've done, even when they've done rubbish. The creative, that's the driving force. I am not satisfied. It makes you go back and do it again the next day and do it better. Um, so it's a normal thing. It won't, it won't go away. I'll tell you the truth. It won't go away. Whether you're working for your uncle or your auntie or for a client, it's the same thing. The fact that you always want to do more is what is keeping you in the game. Do you understand? That's your lifeline. However, there's an important essence of feeling this way. If you key into it, it also is spiritual essence. When you don't feel satisfied with something and someone else can feel like, wow, this is incredible. As a matter of fact, let's pay you this much for doing it. What that does to you, it makes you understand and humbles you that it's not about what you want to do as the best thing in your life. It's about just making yourself available even as unprepared and unsatisfied um, as you might be, unprepared as you are, that, that your unpreparedness is somebody's sufficiency. That's very humbling. That's what happens to me. So sometimes I do something, I'm like, ah, this thing is not really so good. Though. But when my client feels so good with it, I'm like, God, this has to be you. Because when I'm, I'm working on something, I'm like, ah, oh, man, Kai, will these people like it? Mm. I can see all the flaws. But then kind of like, whoa, 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 this, this is incredible. This is incredible. This, I, 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 you've totally just, just blown my mind. And now when, when, when you talk about this blowing client's mind, I realize that I'm not the one. It has to be God in, inside of them because my work is flawed. So it's a very humble, when you can realize that your work is flawed, it's a good thing. It's a dangerous thing to be 100% satisfied with your work because that means you're saying your work is perfect. And if your work is perfect, you leave no space to depend on God. If you feel perfect, you leave no space to depend on God. So when you feel imperfect, you give room to God. When you accept, oh, okay, I'm not perfect, they are giving God some room to say, come and make me, come and feel me and make me perfect. Let them, let them not see all my imperfection. And when they don't see it, you're now grateful to God. So I'm never praying that you ever get to a point where you're satisfied with your work. It's a dangerous thing. Because when you're satisfied with your work, you become proud. You think that everything you get, you deserve it. They're like, hey, why would they like it? Of course, they have to like it. It's my work now. That's already pride. When they pay you, you feel like if you deserve everything they paid you. But when you don't feel satisfied and they pay you what you ask for, you feel grateful. Because you know that they could have seen the errors too, like you're seeing it, but God blinded them. You understand? So it's a good thing. Don't, don't feel bad about that. It's a good thing. Embrace it. It's never going to go away. You understand? But it keeps you coming. And, and, and then it puts in that position where you say, God, help me more. Help me more. Help me more. You understand? But God will never help you to a point whereby you are like ultimately satisfied. Never. 
you always leave that little bit of insecurity that allows you to give glory to him. He likes using the small, weak things of the earth so that those people that feel proud, they say, ah, but I'm better than Joseph now. I'm better than Joseph. Why, why, why is it that the client chose his work? Because you felt you were better than Joseph. And Joseph saw himself as, who am I? You understand? And that's, that, that's how you get better. You get better by saying, I am nobody. I am nobody. You understand? My work is not even that good. I don't know why people are so fussed about it, but I'm grateful that people are have it, people doing a fuss about it. So when I do, even my podcast, whenever I record my podcast, I listen to it, I'm like, oh man, this is not so good. Though. But then I realize, I have to put it out there. Then I put it out there. And people like Mark will reach out to me and say, oh, sir, I just listen, it was very good. I'm like, oh, are you serious? I didn't know, I didn't feel that way. I just felt like if hmm, I was just rambling, I wasn't saying anything that makes sense. But some people, it makes sense. You understand? So that insecurity is good and you must lean into it at all times. Lean into it and accept the reward. Let the reward make you humble and grateful to God. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. That's my question. And I really appreciate the response. Well, my right, thank you. life has changed now. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay, sir. so. So I'll take Mark's question. I think it's almost we're, we're over an hour now, so I, I don't want it to get too long, so I just have to listen to it. So Mark, do you have any one question? If, if, you, are, if you guys have any other question, you can ask it on the group. I'll answer it personally on the group. But for now, I can take one more question from Mark. If Mark has a question, does he have one, you can close now and, um, and I'll take your personal questions on the group. So Mark, any other question? Uh, yeah, I have just one question, but really, really, this, this, what you really said was really, really powerful, sir. Uh, I guess that's one thing that I really so much love about you, um, the spiritual aspect of everything. Yeah, that's one thing that really makes you an outstanding and a unique in the industry. Yeah, so um, my question goes like this. Um, regarding, I don't know, sir, how do you deal with, or how are you able to deal with um, customers or clients that don't really know um good designs like i've made up uh, a lot of designs and at the end of the day this person doesn't have an idea regarding what design is and they said they don't they don't, they don't really like the design so i don't know how do you deal uh, with this kind of uh, how are you able to deal with this, those kinds of um clients because personally um, i'm currently working with a school yeah i'm currently i'm the graphic designer and to be frank as here almost every person in uh, in the in the school right now they don't really know much about designs so most of the time when you do this, they feel it's very, very wrong. And we are really battling with them in the aspect of branding. Yeah, they don't really know anything like consistency in colors and typography and everything. And currently now they are designer and they just want me to play according to their tune, which is very, very wrong. So they don't even know anything regarding branding. And this is a school that's made name for himself. But personally, I feel that guilt inside me because I know this is not what I am supposed to do and I have really spoke with them, talked to them regarding this, but they haven't done anything. Not just only them, but other the other um clients I have met also too that don't know about um design and whenever I do design that I know is very, very wrong, it's very, very bad based on the standard industry and the the, the standard in the industry, I feel so dear uh, that guilt in me. So I don't know how do you go about that feelings and how do you deal with um, such um clients? Okay, that's a good question. Um so we'll close with that question. But the, the, the truth of the matter is, and that's why, you see, as I always tell people, don't be a designer, be a creative. A designer looks to please a client. A creative looks to express something to please himself. Two different things. A designer looks to express something to please a client. A creative looks to express something to please him or herself. That's the biggest difference between a designer and a creative. And I advise people, work as a designer, but live as a creative. Because sometimes you can't afford to live as a creative without working as a designer. Because when you start out as a creative, you might not have clients. You understand? So how do you feed? So you need to design. Designing allows you to compromise sometimes so that you can get something called your payment at the end of the day. So sometimes you meet some client that will be like, hmm, I don't like this thing. I want you to combine blue and purple. 
blue and purple. That's the designer's conundrum. How to combine blue and purple that he doesn't end up totally hating himself and then he doesn't end up totally hating the client. That is the conundrum where we can meet at the middle place where, okay, I've done your job. I don't totally hate it. I don't like it. But then pay me my money. Let me go. I need to survive so that I can go and express myself in the corner as a creative. That's it. So it depends on where you are in your journey. If you are in the early part of your journey where you are a struggling young man that needs to make money to build a future in place, sometimes you just need to accommodate some of the frailties of this your client. Don't you need the money? You understand? They want to they want you to use some phone that that is like comic stand on there. Ah, I like this comic stand. I don't like it though. What you do? First thing, try to tell them. Well, you think that you can force a horse to the river, but you can't force it to drink. If they tell you they're not drinking of this knowledge that you're giving them. Sometimes you just need to give them that comic sound. I need the money right now. I'm not yet a superstar. Comic sound. Yeah. And they're like, whoa, we love it. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Take that money. It gives you time to go back, work on your own personal project that you will put out there. That client work will never put it in your portfolio. That's your own personal project. They've given you money so that you're not thinking of how to eat when you're doing your own personal project or what you're going to wear. Or why. Mm -mm. It, it stops you from distraction. That's what their money is for. Their money is to stop you from being distracted when you're doing your own personal project. Now, do your own personal project. Combine colors well, use the right font, and now do it and promote it, put it out there. You will realize that after a while, when you do enough personal project put out there, people will start noticing your work. Then that client that thought that was telling you use blue and purple and use comic sand, you now come back and say, okay, do this work for us. We saw, we saw your work, it's very nice. Even at that time, you have something to show them and say, do you want your work to look like this or do you want it to look like this? Then they'll be the one that will humble themselves. And after a while, they, they, they'll begin to hear about you from other people. Ah, let's go and work with Marco. And like if he's the only one people are working with now. When you become an authority, eh, you will tell the client, jump. The client will tell you, how high should I jump? They'll tell you, um, am I jumping well? You're, because you're an authority. They, you, when you get to when you become an authority in, in a field, eh, you tell your customers what they need. They're not the one giving you brief anymore. You might listen to them, okay, I've seen your brief, but I think we need this, this. And they say, yes, sir. Because, but you don't start out an authority. To be an authority, you need to be doing all that private work, being a creative in the corner. Do you understand? So sometimes it takes some humbling of doing some work you don't like to do. You understand? But just do it and get the money. Do it, get the money. When you get the money, you can't... If you work with them next time, when you have the money, you have your clients that are waiting for you, that are willing to do what you want, because you're an authority, those people, if they mess you up, just say, no, no, I don't have time for this. We can't, I can't work on this project. I can't, because you guys are stifling my creativity. Now they're stifling your creativity, because then you become a creative authority, not just a designer. So you say, I can't, no, I can't work on this story, you might need to look for someone else. And you move away. It still happened for me today. Today, someone I meant to do a signage for them, and um, they contacted me, and they said, oh, I'm sorry, sign. and I went there, and I looked at it. I was not that I did their existing signage. But at that point, I was still a designer. You understand? I was looking for the money. But I did a very good job for them. So now they called me like how many years later? Like about seven years later. They said they wanted to upgrade the signage. I said, I'll come with my team. Said, I, come? I said, I can't come now. I have stuff to do. They're like, okay, yeah, we know you're busy. They, the first thing they asked me, they said, ah, we know you don't do design anymore. Well, can you make room for us? When they said that, I realized that they understand my positioning now. You know, I'm not the kind of guy they will call and just come at the evening. But when I was desperate, I was that guy. They would call me and say, I'll be there in five minutes. You understand what I'm saying? I won't take my back. I'll just go there. <laughs> That's how I was before. But now I tell them, no, no, I didn't plan for it. Maybe I'll come next week. But now they must accept it. So when I went there, I looked at it. I said, okay, this is it. Okay, that's cool. I gave them my coat. And then they contacted me and said, ah, oh, this is your coat. It's way higher than what you're planning, you know, because we have someone that's willing to do it less than half the price. I was like, okay, you know what? Go for that person. I told her, I said, no, just go for go to that person. That's the best. If you're working on a budget, go for that person that is doing it at less price. If he can guarantee you that he will do it at the quality that I'm going to do it. Full stop. I'm not arguing with them anymore. I don't have the time to argue. You understand? But it didn't start out that way. Seven years ago, when if they had called me, I would have been like, okay, let me see what I can do with my price. Let me cut it. Let me cut it. Let me cut it. To compromise for them. But now I don't have to do that anymore. Because I spent so much time doing my creative work, showing myself, my positioning, that they now have to come and look for me and think to themselves, 
whether they are ready to listen to me or not. So that's what you need to do, um, Mark. Sometimes you're working with the school now. Mm, it's okay. It's okay. You won't be working with that school. <laughs> that was it. The Egyptians you see today, you won't see them anymore. You, you'll, be, you'll be a slave to them very, very soon. Very soon you'll conquer them. And then they'll be the ones saying, ah, okay. The people don't shout on people saying, Mr. Mark said you should use blue. Why are you not using blue? Didn't you hear what Mr. Mark said? That's what they'll be saying. You understand? The, the, the tables will turn, but you need to prove yourself as a creative authority by taking their money and using their money to do your work without distraction. That's why every designer must have personal projects. I hate it when designers don't have personal projects. It means that you are living for the client. And if you are living for the client, it means you are not doing creative work. You are doing subjective work. The best work you can do as a designer is the one for yourself. That one where you are the designer, you are the client. And you do it to a point where you are pushing your work. You are pushing it to the point where by saying, this thing is not good enough, it's not good enough, it's not good enough. You are making it better. When you put it out there, that's the work that we call clients. And they will say, we want you to do work like this. And then you tell them, if your work is going to be like this, you need to listen to me. And that's when you become an authority. When people, when people understand that they need to listen to you, you become an authority. But you don't start as an authority, as I said. So that's what my advice should be to you, Mark. It's a matter of time. If they want to do it, their branding is bad, they still feel they're the chairman, in the, do it for them. Do it for them. Try your best to do it the best way for them, but just for a while. At a point in time, remember, it's not their work that will sell you. It is your work. It's the work you do that you are proud of, that you put out there that will sell you. You understand? And that's what you want. You want to have time to do that by not thinking of money. So sometimes you need to work as a designer, but live as a creative. So, yeah, thank you very, very much. Thank you so much, sir. I'm deeply grateful, sir. All right, thank you very much, um, Mark. Thank you, Joseph. I appreciate you guys being on this call. It has been good teaching you guys for these 12 weeks. I know that some of you have not had the time, but go back to all the audios I sent, all the exercises, do them. They will help you to be better logo designers. But I want to appreciate all of you for taking time. Those that are going to listen to the recording too, uh, part of PMA4. Thank you for taking time to register, for trusting me to be your teacher these 12 weeks. And um, I'm not going to close the group. The group will be open for as long as possible. Feel free to interact. Feel free to share your work. As much as when I have the time, I'll look at your work and correct as well what, what I can. If you have questions too, you can share your questions or I will send, I will, I will also put my WhatsApp number on the group. So like Mark already on my WhatsApp number. Mark, you can put my WhatsApp number on the group so that people can also contact. But I think all of you do, but if you don't have, Mark put the number on the group and you can all contact me with the questions that you have. But I want to appreciate you and I wish you a very good week ahead and a very successful career ahead of you guys. All right, take care of yourself, guys. I'll be ending the recording um, right now. Bye. Thank you so much, sir. All right, then. Take care of yourself.